How many of you have had some kind of chronic pain at least once in your lifetime? Okay, great. So when you had that, what did you do? Brilliant. Let me guess. Some of you, and you can challenge me on this, some of you tried home remedies. Some of you tried Dr. Google. And at least some of you, I bet, went to your GP. But what if the GP's treatment didn't work? Then you probably would go to an orthopedic surgeon. How many of you would think of a rheumatologist? Anyone? Does anyone know who a rheumatologist is? Doctors are excluded. You're out. <laughs> Before I explain the difference, between rheumatologists and orthopedic surgeons, let me narrate a small incident. A 30-year-old man had chronic left knee pain. He could do nothing except walk on level ground with mild discomfort. Naturally, he went to an orthopedic surgeon, did an MRI scan, which was normal, and he underwent an endoscopic surgery of the knee where nothing was found. The pain remained as is, but the guy felt a little lighter because his pocket had been offloaded. When I saw him, what I found was that his knee movements were normal, except for some pain at the end range of movement, like this. What was painful was the tendon which attaches the kneecap to his shin. That was inflamed. Solution? Avoidance of exertion? Some ultrasonic therapy from a physiotherapist. And he was as good as new in three to four weeks. As per the dictionary, rheumatology is defined as the science which deals with joints, ligaments, muscles, and bones. However, in essence, rheumatology is the science which deals with diseases that occur from the mal malfunction of the immune system. Your immunity, which is meant to protect you, sometimes, by mistake, acts against you. And your own protector becomes your enemy. The most common of autoimmune diseases is arthritis. An orthopedic surgeon's job is to repair your body's broken furniture, while the rheumatologists treat inflamed joints with medications, exercise, and prevent joint damage. In other case, Wignett, a young woman recently married, came to me with knee and back pains. While I agree that most problems happen after marriage, in this case, she had genuine reasons. Being married into a large family, she had to work a loft in the kitchen, after which all she could do was think of lying down. Multiple orthopedic surgeons, in fact seven. One MRI of the knee, which showed a cartilage tear. She, un she had undergone an arthroscopic surgery of the knee, and guess what the arthroscopic surgery showed? Nothing. There was no cartilage tear. Magic. Actually, just like how a wife overreacts, if a husband is 30 minutes late and his phone's battery is dead, MRIs are also very sensitive and can overread normal variations. So when I saw this lady, I found that she had extremely flexible joints and a very poor muscle tone. Her shoulders were unequal, one higher than the other. Her pelvis was angulated forward and her hips were jutting out. Standing for prolonged periods pushed her kneecaps backwards and arched her back up normally, causing pain. So this was a case of increased joint laxity with weak muscles in a housewife who was OK in her parents' house because she had no responsibility. But getting married did her in. Women are the blessed ones because they can create life. But where does the baby's nutrition come from? All from the mother. After delivery, a woman has to breastfeed her child for six months to a year. Where does that nutrition come from? The woman has to have those resources, otherwise she's going to get depleted. Apart from nutritious food, you require 1,000 milligrams of elemental calcium, 1,000 units of vitamin D daily through pregnancy and through breastfeeding. Women in India lack this awareness, and they often have more than one child, so do your math. In addition to that, there is an obsession that fair is lovely. So we avoid the sun, 
And because we avoid the sun, we have vitamin D deficiency, and so we have weak bones. It is bad enough that a lot of men do not appreciate the women in their life. But the women should at least take stock of their own health. While we are on women's health, you must realize that most rheumatic diseases affect women. <laughs> this one is funny, right? Rheumat <laughs> Rheumatoid arthritis affects young women. It can affect usually between 20 to 40, but anyone from 9 to 90 can be affected. Multiple joints are affected, painful, swollen, stiff. Every movement is an effort, and over time, these joints become deformed, they become damaged, and a person becomes disabled. The autobiography of Alice Peterson, who was developing a flourishing tennis career when she was afflicted with rheumatoid arthritis, is a vivid illustration of the pain, the disability, and the frustration that a woman goes through just to do the basic activities of daily living. And it makes us realize how lucky we are to be able to do the things that we just take for granted, like going for a movie, or going for a dinner, for a dance. We crib about our boring jobs and our nagging bosses, while these guys would be dying to take your place any day because they can't move out of the house, let alone travel to work. Let's look at Sjogren's syndrome. Sound familiar? Let me remind the tennis fans, none other than Venus Williams. You get dry eyes, dry mouth, fatigue, joint pains, and brain and kidney diseases if not treated. And then you have systemic lupus erythematosus, or lupus, which became known because of the sad demise of Sunanda Pushkar Tharoor. How must a woman feel when she is diagnosed with such a chronic, debilitating, and often life-threatening illness? Let me tell you about this young girl who was just 14 when she was brought to me in 2006. She had a low-grade fever, a skin and a facial rash, some amount of hair loss, for which a relative suggested that she try alternative medication, which is again a common syndrome in our country that friends, relatives, neighbors will all give you advice, even if they don't know the difference between their elbows and their backsides. And so this girl was taken to an Ayurvedic physician who in all his wisdom diagnosed that there was excessive heat in the body. And this carried on for three to four months till that one night when she said she wanted to go to the restroom but she went to the bedroom instead and emptied herself, and then came out to the hall and vomited blood. And when she was brought to me that night in 2006, this is how she looked. Her parents thought it was the end of the world. Once a little better, this girl looked up lupus on our latest junkyard called Google, where you get some goodies and lots of trash, and obviously she was psyched. This girl, is now a 22-year-old strapping, strapping maiden, and she's studying medicine, and she's decided to pursue rheumatology. She used her illness as her driving force. We all need to use our driving force, our inspiration to propel us forward. Like this man who recently met me, a senior marketing official, he walked into my office with a stiff spine, a tilt of the neck and the shoulder on one side and a slightly crooked posture, not too bad, but noticeable. This man had ankylosing spondylitis, which is a condition where all the vertebrae get stuck to each other and the spine becomes fused and becomes bamboo-like. Apart from medications, it is imperative to exercise, but that is exactly what these people don't do. And so I found a better way now. I convinced the wags of these men, the wives and girlfriends of these men, not to kiss them till they exercise. Because research shows that men think of sex 36 times a day. Well, back to this guy. Being in marketing, one must look his best. And people were asking him because of his crooked posture. So he thought he was certified screwed, and he was about to lose his job. And I gave him a different paradigm to view his disease from. I asked him to accept his disease, hold his head high, look into the client's eye, and say, don't you think I'm doing a bloody good job despite my ankylosing spondylitis of 20 years? I performed better than most of my colleagues last year. So how many of you have used your disability as your motivation? 
three presidents of the United States of America had rheumatoid arthritis. Famous Hollywood actors had rheumatic diseases. An Olympic gold medalist swimmer had ankylosing spondylitis and a former president of the Philippines had systemic lupus erythematosus. So if they could do it, why can't others? If I had to live again, I'd still be a rheumatologist because there's so much research being done on how these diseases occur at a molecular level and to find their appropriate cures. There are some basic rules to follow in all these diseases. Appropriate medication, calcium, vitamin D, weight control, and exercise. I simply cannot stress that enough. But what about people who have already had their disease for many years? They're already disabled and quite often on a wheelchair. Well, we can send them to some of our orthopedic surgeon friends and fix some of the damaged joints. But the body has so many joints, you cannot become a robot. Darth Vader from Star Wars had all four limbs of metal, but he had supernatural skills. What about us lesser mortals? So we use instruments and aids to help them and be less dependent on others. Find them new vocations so that they don't have to depend on anyone. Get them counselors to help them when they're depressed. We need to create support groups so that they can reach out to each other. We need insurance companies to make new healthcare policies for them, which is not the case today. And we need to get better and cheaper medicines that everyone can afford. And we need more rheumatologists. How many people do you think can be reached out by a thousand of us in this country? We need people to think beyond the exalted branches of gastroenterology and cardiology. We need people to think of medicine more than just a profession, to inspire students, to help elevate the pain and suffering of fellow humans. As long as there is life, there will always be more and more to be done. Thank you.